So I'm going to kick off by talking about, uh, briefly talking about the materials and equipment uh, that I'll be using uh, before we start moving into the um, image uh, for today. Now, if, if, uh, if I can describe uh, the paper first, um, the, the, the paper that I use, I have been using exclusively for all of these online things, except for where we've been working in sketchbooks and so forth, is uh, Saunders Waterford paper. It's 100% uh, uh, rag content. Uh, and uh, it, which means it's a, it's a really nice absorbent paper. Uh, and uh, as opposed to say a cartridge paper or whatever, but, but the absorbency is, is really quite helpful when you're dealing with watercolors. And it's, uh, the weight of it is 300 grams or 140 pounds. So uh, I have it taped down with some masking tape, but it can take quite a lot of water thrown at this and not really buckle up very much at all. I, I, I don't stretch my paper. Um, I haven't done so for many years. So I'm happy with this weight of paper and that's what I'm using for, for this. Uh, my paints are here. I know Lois has sent out <clears throat> this image with all the paints listed, except for that one, I think. I was looking at it earlier. Uh, so I won't use that because I haven't actually mentioned that to you before, but all these paints I will talk about as I go through them. And if anyone uh, misses it by any, any reason, just do ask me. So I'll, I'll mention, but they are the ones that Lois gave you in a folder on the uh, links that she sent out to you earlier. They're all artist quality in the mostly Windsor and Newton some De La Rowney and uh, there's one, there's one, um, I've forgotten his name, is it Paul Smith? I think it is. I, 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 I was given it, so it's this one, but I'll mention that. So my paints are all artist quality as opposed to student quality and the brushes that I have available, I, I don't know how many of these I'll be using, but I will talk, again, Lois has mentioned these in, in her, um, uh, her links. Uh, and I will uh, describe the brushes in more detail um, as I use them. I, I, I don't think I'll be using all of these, but these are the brushes I, I've had for all of these sessions up until now. Uh, and uh, I, I did some drawing with a, um, a soft pencil and, uh, and that, that's the uh, materials and that's the equipment uh, that I'm using for today but if you uh, uh, if you haven't got for instance um the colors that i'm talking about here uh, i'll try and talk about what might be a, a, a useful alternative color um uh because there is the, the, there are alternative colors that you can use for all of these and indeed if you wish to use colors which are different from the ones that i'm describing and demonstrating that that's absolutely fine it's a bit of a minefield, this whole colour thing, anyway. And and today, I think especially, is, uh, is going to be a fascinating day for colour. Right. Um, the um, traditional landscape is often described as having three components, uh, a foreground, a middle ground, and a distance. And um, it doesn't have to have that. Uh, and, of course, we have urban and land and sea scapes uh, here but but it's it's interesting that that often is the case well it's not the case in in this one here I mean we are so dominant in the sky this photograph by the way is a portrait uh, as I'll describe in a moment I'm actually going to paint it landscape but uh, it, the sky is so dominant here. And it's not surprising because the part of England that this photograph was taken in, Suffolk, over to the east, is, is very flat part of our countryside. And, and you're basically looking out at the Ural Mountains. If you could see, if you could see all the way down there, you're, you're looking east uh, all the way across to, um, this, uh, to Russia. Uh, uh, and... Uh, in terms of it being a traditional landscape, it, we do have a foreground here, and, and it's important just to be aware of that. Um, quite whether you 
where the where the middle of the ground is it's somewhere in, lot in the sea back there and then you've got this enormous sky and uh suffolk and east anglia in the east is all about enormous skies i've lived there for many years and it it's absolutely wonderful the great big skies you get there because you don't get many mountains and hills okay. and everything to break it up um i just on a, a webinar oh hang on excuse me okay. hang on yeah i just um sorry carry on mike okay are, are we all done right so um now so this this is your bog standard beautiful sunrise uh Oh, it's a seascape, of, of course, um, but but the, the, this is really simplified, and I chose this because I wanted to do something on skies, uh, also including reflections here. But there are no, there's no land, there are no boats, there are no birds. There's nothing else here to break up the view, other than a dominant sky and uh, a sea, which is pretty flat anyway. Um, uh, uh, at the bottom of the whole picture. Great, wonderful. So painting in Suffolk is so much a, about skies. Now, uh, I'm going on to, 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 in a moment to talk about this picture specifically, but my last sort of general point is that the way that I will run this session is by breaking, splitting the painting up into four steps. Um, in fact, I, I could call them five steps, but first two steps I'll call one step. So simply put, and I will come back to this again later on, the, the first step is drawing. Um, the second step is putting in the light washes. Third step is darker colors. And the fourth and final step is details and, uh, and any sort of tinkering that, that you want to do. But contained within that first step, uh, I think is an understanding uh, of, of what this scene is all about. So I just want to mention a few things to you here, which will all be relevant as we go through the painting. Um, I, I have mentioned that I'm going to be painting this in landscape. Uh, please feel free to paint it in whatever format you like. Um, but I try and do as much as I can in landscape. Don't always do it. but. Uh, Th this makes it easier for Bill and Lois when they are putting out the images, the paintings that, that I've done and that everyone's done. Uh, for some reason, it works better uh, on, on the um, computer if, if they are landscape. But I, I'm, that's the reason, main reason I'm doing it um, in landscape. If you might want to go portrait because of this great big dominant sky, that, that is just great. So one or two things about this painting, and, and I, this I think is quite important to be aware of for, before we do any drawing. The, uh, the, the wonderful uh, great uh, graduated uh, blue from the top dark warm blue down here to the cooler, lighter blues, which then merge in with the rising sun coming up to meet them. And, and, and uh, just be aware that what you're seeing here is, 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 is a photograph and the limits of the printing machine have produced this sort of image. If we were sitting out there doing painting this now, you might see things very differently, um, but, but uh, Th th that's very clear. We've got this wonderful gradation of blues down to the yellows here. And in fact, it, it goes sideways as well. The, 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 the rising sun would appear to be somewhere around here. Um, and you can see that we've got the sort of warm, warmth uh, yellows with reds in them. And, and as it moves off towards the south here, it gets lighter and lighter. And then in the clouds, we've got all sorts of different things happening. Uh, there's a sort of yellowness of the uh, light uh, from the rising sun catching these clouds. And, and that very quickly turns into something very much uh, with more red in it as it gets up here. One of, one of the great things about painting skies like this is, is that it really doesn't matter what you do very much. Uh, I mean, 
I, I will stick reasonably well to the clouds that I see here, but you can put the clouds wherever you like. You can add more, take away more, whatever. W one of the things of looking out at skies, which is so fascinating, is that you never see the same sky twice, wh whatever the sky is. So um, never see it twice. Now we've got a reflection of all of that coming down here onto the sea. And you can see the yellow warmth uh, uh, re reflection here. And as you, as it goes off to the sides, it reflects more the cooler blues here as well. And um, I think the last point I want to make before we do a drawing is just look at the photograph and think about how soft so much of the sky is. There's an awful lot of this painting which is soft, which in watercolor terms, we're, we're thinking in terms of being wet on wet, where, where, where you're allowing edges to be soft. There's so many soft edges here. Um, very few quite sharp edges of clouds. You can vary that as much as you like. The same thing happens here, although because we've got the, uh, the, the, what's the ripples of the, of the um, water here, that breaks it up a little bit. Um, uh, so when you're looking for this contrast between soft and hard, uh, there's not much hard up here. That we're seeing some some bits of hard appearing in the distant clouds here, and it's not until you start to come up right into the foreground that you're seeing some harder edges as well. And that's all fascinating when it comes to painting this. Okay, this is probably one of the most simple uh, subjects I've done since we've started all this in terms of the drawing you need to. I, actually, there's really only one bit of drawing that you need to concern yourself about, and that's that horizon here. Now, um, your, your decision, needs to be where you put that horizon. The higher up your page you put it, of course, the more water you're going to be dealing with um, and the less sky and vice versa, the more you bring it down, the more sky and the less water. So that's a decision you must make. I, I'm going to put my uh, horizon along this line here and you feel free to do whatever you like. In fact, here we go, I'll, I'll use a ruler. Um, I, I'm going to go with it, something like that, as my, okay. And I've drawn that with a soft pencil because although this doesn't matter, it'll get lost in the dark paint. Um, I'm going to be using a soft pencil up here in the clouds in a moment, uh, which, which I'll probably want to rub out later on. So better with a soft pencil uh, than a hard pencil. So that's really <laughs> the only bit of drawing you need really worry yourself that. I am going to do some more drawing in the, um, to help me with the washes that I'm going to put on a moment. So because the washes are going to be pretty much the light colors of the painting, um, I, I'm, I'm going to draw in the, the light areas in the sky. I won't bother with this down here. I'm going to draw in the light areas of the uh, sky uh, with a soft pencil, just to help me when I'm chucking water and paint around to, to try and get, get the, the, some of the, the warm uh, red yellow clouds here and, uh, and the sky being somewhat separate, although that they blend together a lot. So in this case, I'm going to use the soft pencil and draw it in. The, the, the first, the next bit of drawing I think I'll do is I'll just work out where I want. I, this is, I like this so much where the, the you can see that it's sunrise breaking uh, behind the, the clouds uh, on the horizon. So I'm going to do that somewhere around here. That's going to be somewhere like that, okay. And uh, so because I'm working, taking a portrait photograph into a landscape uh, format, um, I'm obviously going to jiggle this around a little bit, but 
when we're doing these, um, please feel free to, as soon as you feel happy with it, work along uh, yourselves. Uh, you don't feel you have to wait till I finish before you begin. But um, that, so I, I'm going to bring in. Uh, remember what I'm, th what I'm thinking about here is um, just drawing in where I want the light to be, the lightest bit. Yes, what was that a question? I think someone said no. something. No, okay. They started no. to say something but didn't. No, okay, thought better of it, huh? Um, right, so. It's me, I know I wanted to see the picture again. I can't see, I just want to take a picture of it, thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. I, I won't be able to keep this, I, I'll do the best I can to have it hanging around, but um, uh, I, it, it, because it's a bit larger than I, uh, it needs to be. Um, um, so I, I'm using a soft pencil and I'm deliberately putting in some areas that I, generally I want to keep light here. Uh, not, not, not uh, any, nothing more than that. Let's put a few clouds in here, which might be quite useful. They don't have to follow on with the clouds you see in the photograph. Uh, that's entirely up to you. You can put them in as you like. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to bother with this bank of clouds at the bottom here. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do much more than just put in a few like that. That that's. Let's see. Oh, yeah. These pencil marks I'm making. Um, there, that gives me quite a lot of room for a lot of dark blue sky up there. Uh, this is where I want to, I've, I've, th that's probably the most useful uh, drawing I've done there because it will just tell me not to, to try and leave it a uh, light. Uh, there are a few other little light bits here. I'll put them there just to remind me. Um, so I haven't done any drawing of the sea. I really don't think you need to do that, apart from the horizon. I haven't done any drawing of this bank of clouds down here. I don't think we need that here. I've literally just drawn in bits where I want, uh, I, I just want to make sure that I've, I've got some light there to play with. Let's make that a bit bigger, something like that. There we go. So um, it's all over to you everybody. Um, there are lots of little clouds we can put in here, but we can put those in later on. There's an awful lot of this painting we'll, we'll do as a response to what we've actually got on the paper. Okay, that's the end of uh, my stage one. Uh, I, haven't, I don't think you need to do anything in the sea. I'm not going to do anything in the sea. Uh, nothing of this bank of clouds, just drawing in where I want the light to be. Okay, now <clears throat> this next stage here and particularly for this painting, I know I did a practice painting of this um, a little while ago and uh, I realized that uh, uh, this is slightly different from you know, a lot of the other paintings. I talked about the softness in the, cl the, the clouds, uh, with each other and uh, in front of the sky. And uh, that softness with watercolor is going to be gained by using lots of water and being aware of uh, how much paint or, or what's even more important is how much water in your paint you're putting onto lots of water here. So th this is an exercise in just being aware of how much uh, water is on our paper primarily and then how much water will be on our brushes as we bring the two together okay. so this this is a stage where we we can we, we can run a muck really with making things really wet uh, and, and washes but it is the light colors that we put in here which are going to be so crucial to getting that feeling of the sunrise in this subject here. It is a light color. So if in doubt, really use very, very light colors, um, even use no, no colors at all, if you like. We can 
I, I, I found when I did the practice painting, I, I went back over a couple of things, wetting it again and uh, painting be, be, because I, I was just, uh, I just found to, to get the subtlety of all these colors in the sunrise, uh, um, it, I didn't manage to get it first time and I tried to go on and get it subsequently. No doubt that will happen this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to wet all of my paper um, with this spray. I, I don't often use this spray. Uh, what I normally do is just pick up water and slosh it on uh, and then paint over that. Uh, but but um, I, I'm going to spray because I, I have put on my list this spray and uh, if you don't have it, then that's fine. You just make your paper wet, but I'm gonna make it wet. I'm going to, having made it wet, I'm going to start dropping in the, uh, uh, the, the, the light yellow colors here, uh, bringing uh, some of that and with reds in it into the clouds here, uh, bringing some of that color down into the sea here. Um, and then whilst the paper's still wet, but slowly drying, I'm gonna bring in the sky and work it from dark down to the yellow. Um, happy that uh, it will touch other colors and soften it out. I, I can harden it up later on if I want to. And so there's going to be a lot of wet on wet here uh, with this one. Uh, but, but this is not the time to be worrying about making the darker clouds or making uh, the details of the sea. That will all follow later on. So. My spray is this. Uh, I'm going to give it a good old squirt. As I say, I, I, I haven't really done this sort of thing very much before, so it's all fascinating. Just take that on here. I've got my board. Um, flat on the table. So now if if you feel you've done it with 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 this, um, spray or you've done it with your brush if you feel whoa it's a big puddle of water I've got there then just just do that with your with, with a tissue if you like so uh, there is a lot of water on that it's soaking into this wonderful absorbent paper but um, it's um, now wet so I've got to be aware that it's wet there I'm going to put in some really light colors uh, I, I'm I'm going to bring in a very light color here. Uh, it's so light that you, you probably hardly even see it. And I'm using this uh, yellow here, which is gamboge. Uh, you could use cadmium with a little bit of red in with it, but it's, it's ever so slight. And, and, uh, and you'd hardly notice it was there. And I, I'm, I've gone for my warmer yellows here. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not planning on using lemon yellow at all with this. So uh, let's just put that in there for the moment. And um, I'm gonna start taking some of this yellow up here, bringing little bits of red in with it. So I'm gonna use this, this gamboge and my orange red this is Windsor red but uh, cadmium red would do or something like that and just bring in some some so th this is where it's quite useful just having made some um, drawings beforehand let's um if if you've got too much water in your brush and 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 let me just show you what I do here I just I often just squeeze it out. You can't see what I'm doing. I squeeze it out like that. And I may well have to do that later on when it becomes important. But, but this is really uh, useful to um, be aware of, of how much. Do you have an alternative to gamboge, please, Mike? Uh, well, yeah, something like cadmium red, uh, yellow with um, uh, a little bit of red in with it. it it's or a little bit of raw sienna it's 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 a it's almost the sort of it almost a tuscan red so um let's have a look i'm going to bring in some some of this color so i've i've got this this sort of dark red a dark yellow bringing in a sort of orangey 
red, something like that, uh, and keeping it, um, or oh, keeping it pretty light just at the moment. Let's just see, we've got, and if, if you don't paint it all, it doesn't matter about it, because we may be coming back and dropping a few little colors in it. Now this will look all very wishy-washy, but we do want some of these light colors to be playing out for us here. All right, now the paper's wet. Oh, I'll, while some out there, let's bring some of that uh, down here. So I'm taking some of this sort of color down here. If in doubt, make it really light, okay? Just bring it down. It's only this bit that I, I'm gonna bring some of the, the blue of the sky in here for the moment and just put that there let's just see that that'll be enough so it's it's a very light touch with all this um at the moment i may want to drop some some more red in here we'll we'll see in a moment uh, a little later on now, now i'm going to uh paint uh, the sky on that one um I, I'm going to go in and paint the sky here because it's it's good good and wet my paper, um, I, and and I, I I don't want to rush you what you're doing, but I, I'll I'll do this as slowly as I can. I'm going to start off at the top with uh, cobalt blue. Let's just see. I'm going to use cobalt blue as it comes out of the tube. Um, all right, and uh, and and I can. Put that in here. It doesn't have to have a lot of water with it. Remember, you've got plenty of water. It's drying out a little bit. So let's just get a bit more cobalt blue and put that in here. And it can come up close to where your clouds are and maybe try not to overpaint your, your, your clouds if, if you can help it. So we've got. I'm going to make that stronger up the top here, stronger cobalt. And I can do this because uh, I, I want a strong color up here. I may, I, I'll probably go over this again a little later on. But let's just remember it's going to be much darker at the top, something like that, cobalt. And then I'm going to bring that down to um, a, a, a much lighter blue here. So I think I'll get some cerulean, which is the coolest blue. And that's a bit too strong. And put that in here. If in doubt, keep it light. Let's just let that merge in with the uh, yellow that we've got here, uh, just at the moment. And I'm going to take some of that. So I've been using cerulean mostly. Let's just bring some of that here and bring it up to the... This is very much laying down the light colors, which we can work on and tinker with a little bit later on. So let's just bring in some lights colors here. They can. And any little gaps, so something like that. Um, I, I've just dried my brush out and, I, and let's just sweep some of that blue down here a wee bit. And the last thing I'll do at this stage, clean my brush. I'm not going to do any more than this but, and I'll talk, talk through it again so that you don't get too far behind. I'm just going to bring um, no. I was going to bring some more. Then no, I won't do that. I'll, I'll I'll deal with that later on. Uh, let's just have a look at these clouds. Do I want to add a little bit more warmth into 
what about picking up just a little bit with a pretty much a dry brush, a little bit of that red and just put it in places here. We can come back, we can do whatever we like. That, that's, that's as far as I, you've noticed I've left little gaps and I'll deal with all that later on. Um, it's the whole paper is wet. Uh, it's got um, the suggestion now of the, the warm clouds is in there. The blue is all the way around it. It's uh, getting darker down to lighter and that's reflected into the sea here. I, I, I haven't painted any uh, little um, very light bits here because I'll, I'll, that, that will come about a little later on. That's a sort of more of a detail. Um, but I think that's, that's as far as I want to go just at the moment. I, I'm gonna bring in, that this is really warm here. I'm gonna make that warm later on. Um, if in doubt, keep it light, just, just light, like that. You, you, you think, oh my goodness me, where are we going to go with this? But um, uh, we'll, we'll do something with it. So if you can come up with something along those lines, whichever way around you've got your paper, um, then that should give us enough to be working on when we move into the next step of the painting. So that was stage two, uh, which was uh, about washes. So I wet everything. Uh, I, I brought some very light yellows in here. I used, I used my warmest yellow um, and just a little touch of it here. I mean, by the time we finish, that won't look yellow at all. It'll look more or less white, I'm hoping. Um, and, uh, and, and brought that in very lightly here on wet paper. Then still on wet paper, I brought in some cobalt uh, and I made it quite dark. I suspect I'm gonna to have to go darker than this later on. Uh, and I brought that down here, making it lighter and lighter, bring, working into using cerulean blue, which is the lightest of the blues I've got. I brought some of that blue into here, having brought some of the yellows and things into there. I just wanted some warmth, some reds in the skies there so I brought some reds in but I left these yellow I, I don't know what we'll do with those later on it's a, a doing a watercolor painting like this is a, a little bit of do do the best and hope for the best Ra rather hope for the best and, and uh, but at this stage keep it light and uh, we, we, we can tinker with it afterwards right now this third step in uh, the watercolor painting having done the drawing and having done the washes, now we're going to be using darker colors, will probably be the longest of them. And um, we're starting with a bone dry piece of paper. So you haven't already dried your second stage, your washes, it needs to be dry for this. Um, and um, I'm going to, I'm not going to do anything below the horizon line. All right, we can deal, at least not initially. I'm going to leave that and we'll come back to that in a moment. So I'm going to be dealing with the horizon line and above uh, for this. And uh, because, because I mentioned at the start how soft a lot of these colors are big blending into each other. Not, not entirely, but so much of them are soft. And I think that that will help to give the feeling of not just clouds, but, but clouds in the early morning when, when you're, you're, you're just seeing light coming through uh, darkness and you can't quite see the edges very firmly. A lot of clouds in, later on in the day, midday, can often be really sharp edged, but they're, they're not terribly at the moment. This is early morning sun just peeping its head around the corner. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is um, I'm going to spray it with water. So I'm going to, um, how do I, what's the best way of describing this? I'm going to revive 
uh, this bit of paint. It does, doesn't matter about that if the, water, if the water goes on that, because I'm not going to be painting that just at the moment. So I'm going to revive this a little bit so that, um, I, so, so that, and I'm not going to make it too wet. Uh, I, it, I could just put water on the clouds, um, but because I want this softness, I'm, I'm going to give this a spray and I'm going to start bringing in some uh, extra colours in the warm, warmer reds in here. And I'm also going to start uh, bringing in some of the darkness uh, of the clouds that we see here. Uh, and I will do that up this part of the painting and move on down and then I'll paint this um, uh, horizon, bank of clouds in horizon. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure whether I'll do anything underneath the horizon, but certainly that, that's as far as I go from there. A well, couple of things that, that are, are quite interesting here. And if you were sitting out in the gibbering cold, uh, painting this in, a, uh, in Suffolk, uh, this was taken, I think, was it December or January by, by a friend of mine, a guy I used to be in the army with, he said, take some really nice photographs. He, he took the photograph of the Suffolk sunset we painted last year. Um, but, but it's quite interesting that um, there's, some, there's some sort of red here um, into the sky a little bit. So we, we've, got this, we've got this orange, it goes yellow here, and then it sort of peters out and it starts to go a little bit red back here. Um, so I, I think I might exaggerate that a little bit, um, but but I'll, I'll deal with that when we we come to it. Uh, so my my first step is going to be give this a spray, um, because as I say, I want to try and keep the softness of the colours blending in together. I'm oh, I'm almost certainly going to make this guy darker, um, and. Uh, when do I want to do that? Let me just think, do I do it in this stage or later? Um, I, I, let me just, um, I'll, I'll, I'll start off with the clouds and I can always come in with the sky. I might even come in with the sky right at the end to make it darker. So, a bit of spray. Can't really see what that's done. Yeah, I think that's probably been okay. I'm going to move to this brush now, this smaller mop brush. Um, and I, I, I'm going to be using it in places a, a bit bit like this brush here that I said I gave a bad haircut to. If I, I, I the great thing about this is you can get really nice points, it picks up water and you get flat areas, but you can also use it sort of pressing down and opening it up so that it looks as if it's had a bad haircut. The, the, the point is you're getting, as you'll see, you're, you're getting arbitrary marks in here, which will be quite useful. Now, I don't want to talk on too much because I'm going to miss out on my paper. Let's give it another little squirt. It's dry. Someone's saying that they're, although their paper is 300 GSM, Fabriano, it always <laughs> concertinas when wet. Why is that when yours doesn't? Uh, well, mine has done a little bit, but but putting the um, hairdryer on it re-stretched it uh, uh, just a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, this is only held down with masking tape. Um, Right, um, let's, now I'm, I'm conscious I've got a lot of water on uh, the paper already. So let's, uh, let's just pick up a little bit of this red and see if, if I show you what I, I mean, if I just, I just want to make that a little redder in, in places.
in places. Let's uh, let's bring a, a, a so I'm, I'm just using the pure red at the moment. Let's see if that's going to do the job. Let's bring in some. Uh, the, the point is that you really don't want to bring a lot of water to the painting. I mean, if anything, just do what I'm doing here, squeeze out. See what I did? Just squeezed out the water. Pick Which up a little bit. Which using there, please, uh, I'm using my mop, I'm using my, my light red, the winds are red, uh, but I'm using very little water in it uh, because there is water in, um, on the paper. Let's just, this, this will start to, I don't want to make it too red. Um, let's, let's just turn that down a bit. Yeah, I don't want to make that too red. Just a little bit of red. And and this this is up to you now. You you I'm just popping in some uh, red here. So a lot of this is going to be covered um, with dark clouds. In fact, I'm going to pick up that yellow I had before. Uh, and, and make this little bit down here a little bit yellow, a little bit of yellow here. And I know a lot of that cloud work, this has gone a bit too red. So let's, uh, okay. Um, so I, I haven't obliterated all the the, the, the um, light colors I put on before, but um, remember colors will always dry a little bit darker than, than you think, but I am putting them it on with really um, as, li as little water as I can get away with. Keep squeezing the water out of the brush because I've, at the moment, whilst things are, uh, uh, still wet on my paper. I'm going to bring in some, let's make that a bit stronger, some red down here. Just, uh, and let's I've left, I've left these uh, marks that I made, they're, they're very light. Um, uh, they're going to be the very light areas and I'll, I'll deal with that in just a moment. I'm not quite sure how. Oh, um, whilst whilst I'm here, and are things still wet? If if they aren't wet, just get some water, and um, and just I'm just going to bring in some of that red. You know that I was talking about. And here we are going to bring in some crimson. This is a crimson I'm using here, and uh, just bring in hardly any. Just enough to suggest the, that might be quite useful. A little later on, just what's happening there. Um, and is that enough? Do I want to bring in any more? So you, this question you keep pushing until you feel you've done a bit more. I'll go back, let's bring in, um, Okay, I, I just want some of that red to, to be coming through. I'm not, I'm, I, I'll, I may bring some of that color down in here a little later on. And I, I think what I'll do now is um, move on down to this bank of clouds down here. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to do that. See, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this bank of clouds and then I'm gonna come in here with uh, so, so, can you see we've got clouds which are sort of disappearing into the sky, the, the sun's getting rid of them and everything like that. Well, I, I want to bring that in here a little bit, but it's maybe still, my, this is all still a little bit too wet. So I'm moving down now to the bank of clouds. I'm going to use um, cerulean. Let's see what we got here. I'll mix up some cerulean. And um, that's too bright, Cerulean. So let's add a little bit of red to it. Oh, it's gone far too red. Uh, come back. 
get rid of that. Let's try again. Uh, more cerulean, the tiniest little bit of red, just to grey it down a little bit. And in fact, the tiniest little bit of raw sienna. So I'm, I'm just trying to grey it down. I need a little bit more paint there. I'm still conscious that it's it's wet along here, so I've, I've got to be a bit careful. A uh, tiny little bit of red, tiny little bit of raw sienna, graze it down. It's red, Mike. I'm, uh, it's a light red. I've only, got two, or I've, Liz red. I've only got two reds. It's the light red, the, the Windsor red. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm and that, now I'm using my um, brush with a little bit of a point, and let's just say. Let's just take take this along here, and and it, it's going to be darker at the bottom of these clouds. So I'm actually going to leave uh, a, a little bit of uh, space there because I'm going to pop this in here and then bring in some dark underneath it and see if it sort of paints itself a little bit. Let, let's just let's just uh, do that. Uh, I think you'll see if, if you watch what I'm doing here. I'm going to take that on down here. Move it through the sun. I've, I've, um, I've just left the, the, the sun's going to be peeping out around this in a moment. Well, by the end of the painting anyway. Uh, okay, now this is all a bit wet because I, um, let's just pop something in there and don't expect miracles just at the moment. So th this is wet here. Um, and, and what I want to do is I want to give the, the, the effect of the sort of rolling distant clouds a, a, a little bit here. and. and uh, the, the way I'll do that is by making this darker. Let's just bring in, let's say, let's just bring in some, uh, I'll bring in some ultramarine blue and uh, a bit of burnt sienna. Okay, so I've, I've got a, a dark color, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna here. Um, and let's just see what happens if I bring that down here. So I'm gonna bring that along uh, the horizon line, just touching, touching the paint in where it's wet a little bit. We'll see how that goes. I'll do more of it if I need to a little later on. Uh, bring that along here. I'm going to leave some of that red showing under there at the moment. All right, so that, that's brought something in there um, and uh, I, I can as long as you're bringing in some stronger paint into these light areas let's just see um, I want this to be a bit darker up here so I'm switching back to the color I had before. And I, I think I'll pop in, I'll pop in some clouds here. Leaving, leaving some spaces where I'm going to make the darker bits of the clouds. We can come back and we can do more of this a little bit uh, later on. Let's just see how, how that looks. Um, I'm going to have to wait for that to dry a bit more. I, I, I think it's um, it's all a bit too wet just at the moment. We'll, we'll come back to that. So let's pick up some. I'll explain what I've done before I move on. I might have to re-wet this top bit in a moment. Let's just see. I want to bring in some some darkness to, no, I think it's strong ultramarine blue, strong burnt sienna, 
a little bit and I think I'm going to pop in some some of that here because it's whilst whilst the paint is still wet uh, we, we can do all sorts of things providing you bring in stronger colors to it right let's Okay, I'm going to leave that now to, to paint itself uh, and come back and see where we, we've got to in a moment. So I want to bring in some dark clouds here. I think, I think it's going to be all right. So, so I'm going to pick up some of these, this darkness I've got here, which was ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt sienna. Uh, I've got a dark, and let's, let me just see if I, if I, here I'm using my, my brush in a, it's, it's still, it's not quite, it's a little bit too um, dry, uh, a little bit too dry, so I'm just going to revive it ever so lightly with revive it. Right, so I've got a little spray of water here. I, I'm going to, uh, and if, if I can use a bit more water uh, for, for these very light clouds, if, if you feel that you've got too hard an edge, on these, you, you can always just get your finger and touch the edge and it will just take the sharpness out of it, just a bit like that. Uh, there's obviously some water here, so that, that's no bad thing, but I, I just need to be aware of, of that. Let's just bring in So these are, these are quite light at the moment. Um, I, 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 I'm going to do the same here, but I, I'm going to bring in, I need to bring in some darkness a little bit. So I'm going back to my ultramarine blue, my burnt sienna, which is giving me that sort of sludgy color. That's just, I, and the way I'm using my brush is, is almost with the sort of bad haircut that I was talking of before. So if we put in some of the shadows here, leaving, uh, leaving the light bits of the clouds that might show through as they do so well in the photograph. So let's just, now I'm conscious that I'm touching this in and um, the, the paper is still wet. No worries with that at the moment. Um, let's just do a bit more here. You see the brushes. Now, if that's too sharp, you can either do that or you can add a bit of water to it, but be careful adding water because you'll, you'll end up with cauliflowers or blooms and things like that. So let's just, well, it's quite strong, dry paint I'm using at the, at the moment for this. I want that as a little bit too blue, so let's add a bit more burnt sienna. So here we are. Again, have I got any sharp edges that I want to? I don't want to sp keep spraying it. Um, now, I might just bring in some stronger paint a little bit up here and literally stronger paint. Uh, bring in some of that French ultramarine, burnt sienna, but, but there's almost no water on my brush here. Let's, and what I'm going to do now also for some of these darker areas, I'm going to bring in a bit of this neutral tint. Payne's gray is another color you could use, just a little bit, just to darken it up. Let's just have, see that's working with 
the softness of the water that's there with that looks a bit dark at the moment let's hope it's not going to be when when it's dries uh, let's put a bit there and I think I'm going to take some of that and put that if if I feel I want to make it a bit darker still when we get to um, the next stage I'll do so this is very wet here so I'm just conscious that if I'm going to put anything on it it wants to be very dry paint a bit more brown If, um, if you see these clouds up here, it'd be quite nice to have them looking as if they're really catching some light as they are doing in the photograph here. So one of the things I can do is just, I've, I've got this color, this dark color, I've added a little bit of water to it and I'm just going to bring it down around, can you see the edge of the clouds? And by, by putting the dark against the light, it makes the light appear a little bit lighter. I'm definitely going to make the sky dark, but so we're going to be painting over this in a moment. Right, I'm going back to adding a little bit of um, uh, dark, extra dark on some of these clouds down here. I think that they need a bit of depth to them. So ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, it's a little bit wet, a bit of neutral tint, paints grey, and let's just, uh, that's right. I, I need there to be some sort of recognisable difference, um, darkness, so that, uh, well, what's happened here? Right, drop something, right. So I'm still working with um, wet paper takes quite a while to dry, but I don't want to just, just um, something like that. Uh, now I want to bring some, some of that darkness into some of these clouds here. Um, I, I just need to remix something that isn't quite so dark and dry it out. Let's just see if I can so don't forget when you're doing this that the little trick of um, the little trick of uh, just using your finger if you want to soften an edge. If you come to bits of paper, if you have been using this spray bottle where it's wetter than others, just be conscious of that. You might need to come back to them. I haven't done anything about this light area here. Um, let's put a few more clouds. Just touch a few clouds in here. Not done anything to see just yet. Let's just see whether Let's just see if that's going to be enough. I'm going to treat, I'm going to make the sky darker, but I'm going to deal with that in, in, in the details, the next stage, I, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think that's as far as I want to go just for the moment, let, let that dry 
and I've, I've, I've got to bring in some warmth to the sky and merge that in. I'll do that a little later on. Um, and, and bring the sky down and do the sea. So that's as far as I'm going to go with this stage. I just feel that I'm going to leave it, uh, leave it and uh, then come back and put details on to try and make it all sing along. Um, yeah. Okay, right, everybody, if you haven't um, already begun, I, I think now's a good time. It's, um, it's still actually painting itself because it's still a little bit wet. Um, but we'll see what comes out. I'm going to dry this with a hairdryer in a moment uh, in preparation for the last stage. Now, there's quite a lot going on there. Um, I started off by bringing some more reds, red into the clouds uh, here, literally by just doing that. I, I started off by wetting it, of course, and then bringing in some strong uh, uh, dry paint, pretty dry paint in here, um, around here as well. Um, moved on down to creating some sort of a, a distant bank of clouds going on here, which is, um, uh, I, I, I switched to cerulean blue with a little bit of red. That went a little bit too uh, purpley. And then I, I just brought in some raw sienna, uh, which which was, was the yellow bit in it. And that sort of grayed it a little bit and painted that in and then brought in some dark colors so, so that looked as if there was darkness underneath it. We'll, um, we'll see whether that's going to be dark enough in just a moment. Um, I came back and made a stronger mixture, this time with ultramarine blue and raw uh, burnt sienna um, here. And, and in fact, a little bit of neutral tint just to make it darker and, and brought that in. And you can see, um, that, that I, I wasn't trying to get specific shapes with, with the darks of my clouds. I was using the brush uh, a little bit, uh, uh, so you're getting strange marks coming in. And in places, I softened the edges either by putting some water on or using my finger in some way. And, and then I, I, I got to the stage where I thought, oh, stop, let's, let's let that dry and we'll come back and we'll see how we'll pull it all together in the, third, in the final step. So good luck, everybody. I'm going to dry mine now. Right. Um, I'm going to use French ultramarine or ultramarine blue here uh, on the sky because I want the warmth of it. And in fact, I'm actually going to drop in a bit of neutral tint because I, I, I really want this to be dark up here. So and, and then bring that down. So let's see how we go. I've got um, let's see what I'm doing. Yes, uh, pick up now. Remember, this is wet, so I um, I do need to have some water in my my paint and um, my pigment. But I'm picking up ultramarine here, and um, Uh, I can paint over a lot of this. It's just, um, I'm conscious that I, I want to keep some of the clouds. Showing up lights, let's bring. Is that cobalt or ultramarine? No, this is ultramarine, yeah. Oh. Very Didn't much we ultramarine. Yeah, and um, let's bring some of that in here. Um, let's go back and pick up some pure French ultramarine, uh, ultramarine blue, just bring that in here. Um, and 
I still I wanted to make it even darker. So I'm going to pick up some neutral tint here. Whilst it's sort of good and wet, it's um, it's going to be painting itself as much as possible. Okay, let's let's see what that will give us. And down. So so I think um, I think I'll leave that now and. Oh, I'm just going to change my water because I don't want any blue with this. Right. Um, when I did my practice painting, I used this Windsor orange, but because I haven't mentioned it to you at all, so I'm going to bring in some uh, something. Well, I'm going to use this gamboge and a little bit of red and see, in fact, I'll, I'll go for my smaller brush, I think. I might control it a bit better. Uh, gamboge, a little bit of red and just be aware of what's, what's happening here. The, the, um, this, this, this will go weaker to the top let's um let's and it's actually um darker as it gets closer to where the sun is so i'm going to leave a couple little spaces for these clouds that I drew in earlier. I'm going to bring in a little bit, a little bit more um, here, and th this is virtually uh, water that I'm using here too. Can you say what the yellow, the orange is, please? The, the, I've made the orange from gamboge. And um, uh, and a little bit of the light red, just but and, and I've added a little bit more red where I wanted it to, um, where I wanted it to come down to what what's light there, just a little bit of red there, and hopefully that that. That means that here you've got the warmest bit of the sun and it, it sort of disappears. Um, it disappears down here. Let's just add a little bit of, that's too, too much. Let's get rid of that with, whoa, where that yellow come from? Right, okay, so we've, we've got interesting colors appearing here. Let's just see what happens as that disappears down there. Having put that paint on there, I, I brought in some water. I, I, I could have put the water on light water, just clear water on here first and then painted and it would blend it in. But as long as I'm not bringing lots of water onto something that's already wet on the page, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be all right in terms of not having blossoms and blooms and things. Now let, let's let's do something down here, um, the, the sea. We'll just let that paint itself a little bit. Um, I, I'm going to, I've, I've got some of these colors I want to reflect in, um, no, I, I, I want to reflect some of these colors in here, but I, I think I'll do it the other way. I'm gonna bring in some darker colors and then right at the end, I'll, I'll bring in whatever lighter colors I want. So, um, Going to my cerulean blue. Now, remember, this is something I said that I would have maybe done as I was working through this um, uh, uh, at the time, but I've left it specifically so I'll show you how I'm doing it. I'm going to cerulean blue 
Um, and at the moment, I'm going to use this brush, but I, I might switch to this brush, I'm, uh, and, and you'll see why in a moment. So let's just leave that handy at the moment. I've got some cerulean blue. Um, that's quite a cool blue. So let's just um, let's just see what happens. A little bit of burnt sienna that grays it down a bit. I, I don't know. Um, okay. I'm wanting to put some marks in here for this being the sea. So um, they want to be a bit darker. I, this is all a bit too wet at the moment. Let's get a bit of ultramarine, burnt sienna. Let's just see whether that's going to work down here. And, and we haven't talked about perspective in this painting uh, deliberately. And uh, one of the um, one of the uh, there is very little perspective here. Well, there is perspective, but it's not not the type we've we've had in so many of the other sessions. But one of the things that's very useful to know about creating the feeling of depth, things going away from you, is how things flatten out as they go far away from you. So, although it's not a very turbulent sea, this one, uh, there is movement up the front here, and that. I, if anything, I might even exaggerate that a little bit. Um, but that sort of movement that you see here, as it goes further and further away, becomes flatter and flatter and diminishes. Even if it was a raging sea, it would be doing something like that. So what I've done is I've mixed up a, um, a, a, a sort of muddy um, cerulean, a little bit of brown color there. And let's just see whether if I, if I make little marks here, whether, whether these are going to be dark enough. And the, the lines are quite straight at the moment. I can go back and fill them in a little wee bit. So here you can see, um, and I can use the point of this brush to get sharp little bits. Let's just see what happens if I click that along here. So I'm going to switching backwards and forwards. So in the distance, you see, you don't see a great deal happening, just a few little marks maybe, but as it starts to come closer to you, so maybe you get to see more of the light catching the waves. And, and also it maybe we can make it a little bit darker as well. So let's just, let's just do something like that. I'm going to make that a little bit darker, a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, say, and um, yeah, a bit stronger than that. Yeah, a little browner. It's still suggesting things are quite far away, but um, may maybe there is a, a little more up and down with uh, the waves. We're beginning to see a little bit more as it gets closer. Right, I'm, I'm deliberately now just making a few marks. Can you see we're not we're not completely flat anymore. I'm coming in with some darker ones in a moment. That's just, uh, I'm going to come back onto this when it's dry and um, add any little orange touches that would be useful, I think. Uh, now here we go. I'm going to switch brushes now to this one, uh, which is a dagger, a sword. Um, pick up the same colours I was using here, a bit of cerulean, a bit of ultramarine, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna will 
turn or see this. I don't want that to be too blue. It's too wet as well at the moment. So let's let's just squeeze some of the water out of that. And, and this is a bit darker, so it's touching parts of the uh, painting I've done so far, which um, and, and just spreading the darkness through. So we've got sort of little marks here. I need a bit more water. It's all that's why it's called watercolor, and water comes first because. Um, And you can see this brush is a great this uh, you could do this with a rigger a little, little harder work really uh, and um, now I want to bring in some some of those interesting waves a little bit so how do I do that um, uh, I think I do that by making the colour a lot stronger. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and um, Okay, I'm going to wait for that to dry a little bit. In fact, I will dry it a little bit because I'm putting in this dark colour here, but it's not it's not giving me quite the the hard edge. You know, I talked about these some of these being hard edges. So if I just give that a little bit of a dry here. And then go back to what I was doing, pick up some ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt sienna. I'm getting, I, I'm getting quite a dark colour here. Uh, I don't want it to be too wet. Let's just see if we can create. That wants to be a bit darker. Now, if I wanted to make, say, this a little bit darker here still, I'm not sure I do, maybe, maybe this one, uh, maybe I'd go to my neutral tint and pop a little bit in there, just let it the neutral tint, the neutral tint there maybe, in, in the foreground. Um, Someone's asking what would happen if you'd put your waves on wet paper rather than dry. Well, I wouldn't get any of these sharp edges I'm getting at the moment. Um, uh, but, but, but because I've been painting it, a lot of the um, marks I've been making um, have been blending into one another anyway. Um, Someone uh, says she's had a problem with blooming. Could you explain what blooming is and what she could do about it? Yeah, it's... It, it very simply you're you're putting wet water onto something that's already wet and and it sort of spreads more water out like that it becomes like a bloom or a cauliflower or something like that um and um uh, that, that's all it is so i've i've mentioned a few times here that what i've been trying to do 
is um, if I'm bringing, if I've wet things, particularly as I've been spraying quite a lot in this one, if I've wet things, then if I'm going to bring more colour into it, it wants to be with as uh, with as little water as possible. The reason for that is that you've got water on the paper. And so you can use the water that's on the paper. Bring in too much water and it, it sort of spreads out like a balloon. Now, um, what, what I'm going to do is just dry this, rub out um, the, the um, pencil marks, bring in some of this orange colour in here just to play around with it a little bit. And I, I might just look at look and see whether I need to do anything to those um, clouds in the distance. So here we go. I'm sort of getting towards the end of it. If you're working on this, that's fine. But the reason I'm drying it is so that I can bring in some warm yellows and oranges on here without, uh, without it all mixing with the blues. Now, remember, this third, fourth stage is about details. So um, I, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to bring in some of this orange here. And I'm also going to um, put some distant blue in the sea here to push the sea further back uh, than, than it is. So if I um, maybe just clean some water. Uh, this is very much just finishing off the picture. So I'm, I'm going to th this orange here, which, if you remember, I got by taking a bit of gamboge. That's that's a lot of gamboge there, and um, a little bit of red. That's probably quite a lot of red as well. Uh, let's see what have I got here? If, uh, can I? That's that's too orange. I think let's just see. I just want to create something a bit, something of the uh, the warmth up here that we had. If I leave little gaps, then they're they're going to be the light bits. So. Um, Someone was asking about the colour of the wash underneath. Um, so that's obviously more gamboge, but what was the blue? Yeah, the blue the is the sky, based the cerulean. I use yeah. cerulean. Yeah. The, uh, and, and then I, I've uh, brought a darker uh, grey over it. Let's, let's, just, um, let's just see. Um, I don't know if I want to go any more than that. Just... But what I do want to do is come back to some of this uh, blue, dark blue I've got here. I, I, and I think um, I'm, I'm trying to lose that. Let's, let's see if I can. Yeah, that's, that's fine. If I, I can use some of that color just, and, and I'm losing a lot of the detail of the waves that which seem to be appearing rather a lot here. Let's just take that. And you see just by taking a little bit of that over here, it, it gives a feeling that, yeah, that, that helps push that. And I, I think I'll use, um, some of that possibly 
just to make some of these distance. Bank of clouds, a bit darker. I think we're, we're getting to the point where I mustn't do any more. Um, now, I'll dry that. I'm going to rub out the pencil marks and take a final look at it. Uh, is there anything else I want to do to that? Um, maybe do I want to make these a little bit darker? No, let's let's um, get the eraser out. And it's probably the sort of thing you 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 finish it and you go and have a drink, a cup of tea, something a bit stronger. And um, we'll come back next day or something, and, and just a little bit and think, oh, what can I do which isn't fiddling? And if you can't think of anything, don't do anything, do nothing. So let's um, get rid of some of these pencil marks. So this is um, uh, what they call a plastic rubber, I think it is razor, but th this is where using a soft pencil at the start uh, does help you a little bit as opposed to a hard one with hard edges. Um, maybe where we've done that. Now, is that what I wanted? Is that my Suffolk Sunrise? Um, Do I? Just to yeah. check, Mike, the colours of the sea that you put over the top was ultramarine and raw sienna. Well, when I, th this bit dark bit here, what, what, what I did was really, I just picked up some of the, the, the dark greys that I, uh, bluey greys that I'd been painting with um, and just put them across there. And then I felt, yeah, that's okay. It, it, all I wanted to do was just to take that further away uh, from me here, because the, 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 I think the, the I, I want the contrast between the darks and the lights up in the foreground. You know, I talked about a, a landscape, traditional landscape being foreground, middle ground and distance. Well, I was saying we're, we're a little bit scatty here because we've got foreground, but quite where our middle ground. Well, the, the, the middle ground sort of is, is this already. And I just wanted by bringing some of that uh, bluey gray, Color here over here, it lo it lost the contrast between what was light and dark, and it just made it uh, it made it disappear off a little bit further. Um, uh, now, when I was looking at this, there are all sorts of things maybe you could do, or maybe I could bring in some little darker bits here. But I think that's actually the best best of all my clouds, so I don't think I'll touch it. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I think maybe less is more, and that often includes knowing when to abandon it 